Is it that you don't know how to interpret these present times? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? You, as you are going with your adversary to the magistrate, try hard to be reconciled to him on the way, or he may drag you off to the judge, and the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you've paid the last penny. Here ends the reading of the good news. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The health insurance plan that Pastor Bill and I have through the church is administered partly by the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. And they send out these little emails to us, these little newsletters encouraging us to practice healthy habits, eating and exercise and all that kind of stuff. In addition, they sometimes have these little newsy articles in there that are supposed to be inspirational for us pastor types. And um, one of the encouraging pieces that was in there recently was about a study linking worship attendance, regular worship attendance, and blood pressure. And what this report brought to light is that people who worship regularly have lower blood pressure than those who worship infrequently. Now, I don't know why you came to worship today, but if it was to get your blood pressure lowered, I'm not sure that the words of Jesus are going to help you much today. I'm not sure either what I'm supposed to do with this at first when I read it. I've come to bring fire on earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Do you think I came to bring peace? Well, hold on for just a minute there, Jesus. Let me see what the Bible says about that. And so I turn to Isaiah, the ninth chapter. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Do you think that I came to bring peace? Hmm. And then I looked at Luke. And suddenly there was a great company of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. Do you think that I came to bring peace? And then I turned to John's gospel, to Jesus' own words, to his disciples at the Last Supper. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Peace I leave with you. And what about when Jesus rises from the dead and his disciples are locked behind that closed door? And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. Do you think that I came to bring peace, Jesus asks us this morning? Well, yes, Lord, I do. I mean, that's what we preach and teach. Were you just having a bad day or something? Why did you say, no, I came to bring division? I'm confused. This raises my blood pressure, and my doctor tells me I'm not supposed to do that. What is it? Did you come to bring peace or not? We might be tempted to just gloss over this. 
We might look at it as if it's a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde thing here. But then we remember, Jesus doesn't say anything by accident. This isn't just a mistake that we can ignore. This isn't just a bad day. In the words of God from Jeremiah, I want to give you grain today in this message and not merely straw. So, are you listening? Here goes. One of my favorite names for God is in Revelation, the 21st chapter. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Those are the names of the first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. I am the A to the Z. I am the beginning and the end. Let's take a minute and listen to that whole passage that talks about God that way. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with humans, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning, crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. God was there before anything else existed. God created everything. And when all of this is gone, God will still be here and present. And so we are in between on that alphabet, in between the alpha and the omega, the A to the Z. When Jesus talks about division and the brokenness of human relationships, he's actually talking about the reality that we live with, isn't he? He wants people to know that faith in him, following him, believing in him, can actually cause trouble in your families. And most of us know that's true. Pastor Bill and I have often had people come and meet with us and talk about how they have a son or a daughter or a parent or a cousin or a nephew who just doesn't like the fact that they worship Jesus. We also know that the message that Jesus brings of self-sacrifice, of putting others first, of forgiveness, of giving away, is not a message that many people want to embrace. Selfishness is something most people get. Selflessness is much harder. So, Jesus, in the lesson today, wants us to know there's a cost to being his followers. And it might mean that some of our closest family members don't want to have anything to do with us. That's painful. But he doesn't want to misrepresent what it means to be a believer. In the big picture, Jesus is all about peace. Ultimately, God's will for peace will be accomplished. His plan for the whole of universe, that things will be peaceful, will happen. Last week, Pastor Bill focused on the promise where Jesus said, Have no fear, little flock, for the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. That's not an earthly kingdom. The kingdom of God is the reign of God for all space and time in all peace and unity. That is a heavenly kingdom. 
So we live in the meantime. We live where there will be days, awful days. We live in a time where there will be events, awful events. And there will be brokenness, awful, painful brokenness. There will be things in this life that raise our blood pressure, that cause us to grow faint, to be weary, to give up hope. As the Apostle Paul mentions in our lesson, second lesson for today, we need to run with perseverance the race that's set before us. To trust in the promises of God. And to know that, yes, life will not always be smooth and joyful. Of course we wish it were. But the truth is, it won't. But because God is God, because he has revealed his will to us through Jesus Christ, his son, we know who is in charge. Jesus died on the cross so that we know the powers of sin and evil and death can be defeated. And when he rose again, he announced to us his plan. And it will be accomplished. We know who wins the final victory. And so, I hope your blood pressure hasn't gone up today. I hope it's been lowered. And let's listen one more time to the words of Jesus to his disciples. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Lord Jesus, thank you for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you for being honest with us, letting us know that when we are in times of turmoil and brokenness and division, that that shouldn't surprise us. But help us to not grow weary and tired, but keep our eyes focused on you and on your kingdom and on the promise of eternal peace for those who love you. Give us that peace. In your name we pray. Amen. You may remain seated as